coming up in just a moment. Lance Leopold will turn Kansas around, at least make it competitive and respectable. I think most of us like what he's done, right? Kind of like what he's done, what he's trying to do. It's not easy. The, they, they have to make up lost ground of a lot of missed scholarships. And, of course, there's a rule now that allows them to do that a little bit quicker. Yeah, there is. Um, but, I mean, it's not a rule that's going to turn things around overnight. Uh, obviously, they're in a very much a rebuilding mode still. And uh, I think they'll be better this year. I've said this a few times now. Uh, but, you know, to what extent, I I'm not real sure. I don't think they're a team that you just – uh, snub on your schedule and say, oh, well, that's a win and just move on along like it's Kansas from maybe even a couple years ago uh, where you could basically do that unless you were Texas. Uh, but I do think that, you know, they are a team that's going to jump up and probably give somebody more of a handful than they realize. And uh, you got to be on your A game. Uh, certainly they should not be a team that you would think turns around and is suddenly flirting with bowl eligibility. Uh, but they can, you know, add a couple more wins to what they did last year and then just keep building from there and then hopefully add a couple wins if not, you know, take even a bigger jump up following that. But it's going to be a long, slow road. I think he can speed up the pace a little bit because of all these new rules, but they also are not beneficial to him. I mean, as much as they are beneficial, they're also not because as soon as you got a guy that's worth assault, uh, some other program's going to come around looking to grab him away. Why, why are you going to say Kansas? Why would you say there? We can give you NIL money, and that's what everybody's celebrating right now, and that's why I think it kind of sucks. But... Um, you know, he is doing a good job, and uh, we'll see on them. Uh, you know, I don't know right now how I feel about, you know, picking anything more than a couple of wins for them. Uh, but, you know, we'll see how the rest of the summer goes and how that roster eventually settles down. I think one of the weird things that's happened with NIL and the transfer portal is that depending on what level of talent you are at your school, you know, so the, the, the level right below you is all of a sudden your triple A. When it comes to that, because Kansas could certainly go and find a guy who might be the best player at, um, you know, Stephen F. Austin and say, hey, do you want to play on this level and bring them up? And now Stephen F. Austin is kind of screwed because that was probably one of their better players because this guy can play up. Now, they also benefit because they'll get guys coming down at, at, at SFA. So maybe it bounces out a little bit. But, you know, as you go further up the line, so if you're Kansas, you can probably go to, you know, Stephen F. Austin and Murray State and places like that and get guys who are under-recruited or developing now because they were in a different spot. And then if you're somebody like Alabama and Georgia, then, you know, pretty much anybody else is your farm system. Yeah, but it, you can just go anywhere. It's a, it's a circle. I, I saw a stat, and it was about women's basketball, but I, I did see this. Thousand girls, women, young ladies went into the transfer portal, and I think the percentage was, like, almost identical the last two years in just over 50% of them that had actually signed or gone somewhere else, which means if it was 1,000 or 1,200, I don't remember the exact number, that five or 600 have signed, five or 600 have nowhere right now. And, and, and uh, that, that's not going to ever get any better. It's great advice being given then if there's 500 kids who are sitting without a team right now. I mean, what kind of advice is being 500? And that's just women's basketball. Yes. So, you know, forgive me if I start to get worried a little bit about NIL leaking into high school ranks and how that brings out more street agents and more of these speed coaches that aren't on the up and up and so on and so forth, or even high school boosters, which is just a whatever. Um, that's part of the reason why, because clearly right now there's not very much good advice being given for, uh, you know, several hundred out there. And look, maybe some of those weren't even advice. Maybe it's just like, I'm tired of being here. Let's just see what else is out there. But 500 just in women's basketball. I mean, I think that that speaks volumes as to uh, kind of the market right now. And look, if you, you know, these people that are jumping in the transfer portal, you know, kind of like the moment you do that, if you're a big star, great. Yeah. You're going to be Hollywooded up. You're going to be, you know, valeted around the next campus that wants to bring you on. But for the majority, you know, like 487 of them, mm -hmm. I mean, what are they really hoping is going to be accomplished? Because I don't know that the market is there for them. So when you see, you know, 1500 kids in football are in the transfer portal, I can understand it for like, 50 of them but outside of that like the other 800 something I, I don't know what what the what the plan is so that's where it, it gets really wacky and uh, a little bit out of control I think is just maybe some of the advice being given and just some of the decisions being made but there's no doubt it benefits you know plenty of people Jordan Addison uh, being right off the top you know of mind and uh, we've talked about some of the deals been given in other sports as well but that's that's a lot of players with no home basically or, or no real market for them just sitting there um, and for whatever reason why, that's a shame. Juan, we will get back to